Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a look at engineering and engineering design processes. Uh, we're going to be doing a full engineering project here with hot and cold packs. So it's kind of important at this point that we kind of take a moment and just ask ourselves, what are engineers and what processes do they follow? Okay. Uh, realistically, an engineer is taking the knowledge that we'd find through science and developing something with it okay uh, so our development that we're going to make is a hot and cold pack okay we're going to actually design a product um, that could be manufactured and could be uh, used by people okay and we're making that off of information that we got from doing something called calorimetry and we're looking at heats of reactions okay but engineers do this with all sorts of information and in all sorts of fields. There's engineers for just about everything from the roads that we drive on to um, the iPhones that we use. All, all sorts of things have engineers working to use scientific principles to create better lives for everybody. And realistically, uh, a big part of what we're looking at today is this thing called an engineering design loop where we take things and we innovate and we improve and we make better um, objects and, and items that we use in everyday life okay so ultimately that first time you go through that loop you might make a new invention you might make the bicycle right and uh, the bicycle then becomes improved over time and that's really this cool process that we call an engineering design loop, where we can take information, scientific information, we can develop something by applying that information, right? And then we can improve what we made over time and kind of this cyclic process that keeps going around and around and around, all right? And that's really what we're going to be looking at here is how does this process work? So the first step for an engineer is identifying the needs. Okay, uh, This shows up in our classroom often by just discussing the project that we're doing um, and the needs of our clients. So for instance, in the hot and cold pack engineering, uh, you're hired by the PE department. The PE department's hired you to make a hot pack or a cold pack uh, that they can take with them uh, and sell at events. Okay, So that is the problem that we'd be looking at. But later on, we're going to have other problems. We're going to have um, ones with roller coasters. Uh, we're going to get hired to develop... Um, entertaining roller coasters uh, you know there's lots of things that our, our class is going to get hired to do in the context of these problems to create different solutions ultimately when these things happen you, you want to ask yourself what you're trying to accomplish what's the requirements what are the needs so the needs of uh, our clients within hot and cold pack engineering look at things like the cost of the product that we're making okay uh, because the intent is to sell our um, our creations we have to make sure that they are cost effective okay we also have to make sure that they're safe for people to use we have to make sure that they can last uh, enough time so there's all these little pieces that you have to kind of play with and figure out what the best solution really would be. Okay, these are called constraints. Ultimately, constraints are what stop us from just doing whatever we want. Okay, engineers don't just do whatever they want, they have to develop a solution that is effective and efficient and comes in uh, under all the different constraints, whether it be uh, we need it by, you know, Thanksgiving, or we need it to only cost this much. All these different factors play into what we're going to make. Usually, once you figure that part out, you got to research the problem. Okay, researching the problem 
could take a lot of different forms. Uh, as you know, there's really good websites to go to, and there's really not so good websites. Among the really good ones are what's called uh, professional journals. Uh, those are peer-reviewed uh, journals like Science and Nature, and uh, those ones contain really good information from experiments that other people have done. Uh, we can also conduct our own experiments. That's usually what happens in class. Um, for hot and cold pack engineering, you're going to be conducting an experiment with the um, what's called a calorimeter to kind of see what the salts do. Uh, we got a bunch of different salts. We toss them into a calorimeter, and we'll get to see like what they actually do to water before we use them on water. And oftentimes, um, you also include consulting with experts if you can. Um, from all that information, you develop possible solutions. Okay. Oftentimes in my class, uh, this is where we're brainstorming, and I usually have everyone come up with their own solution within the team. Okay. So everyone comes up with their idea. And then they pitch it to the team to see which one they want to go with. And that way you get different people's ideas. And sometimes the best idea is maybe taking two people's ideas and putting them together. Okay. Um, the key is to be open-minded in those kinds of discussions. Because if you aren't open-minded to it, um, you can sometimes want your idea to be what we do and maybe yours isn't the best okay so listen to other people and what they suggest and try to give reasonable arguments about why you think yours is best or why theirs is better you know use logic have reasons don't just say oh we're going to do this because so and so said okay once you sort out the most promising idea okay usually you come check with me and say hey this is our idea and i'll tell you whether it's it's going to work or not uh, but ultimately when you've selected the most promising solution you're going to then figure out how to make that work okay maybe you need to go get you know some salts maybe you need to get uh, some styrofoam, whatever. Uh, whatever it is you're going to use to create your particular hot and cold pack or whatever it is you're trying to engineer. You're going to then try to sort out who's doing what and, and go make it. Okay, And what you make is what's called a prototype. All right. Uh, here are prototypes for Google Glasses. You can obviously see that before they got to the sleek design, uh, it almost looked like you, you had like cell phones strapped to your head briefly. I mean, could you imagine wearing giant circuit boards like that? That'd be really weird. Um, but as the prototype improved, as they went through this design process over and over and over again, eventually they managed to create a design that did look like something people could wear. Okay, And that's really where imagination, creativity, and, and just trying to keep working with these ideas in a, a cyclic fashion, create something better than what you did the first time. Once you have a prototype, you got to test it. Okay, So you test your prototype, and you see if that will do what it's supposed to do. Okay, This is where you get most of your data as far as what you made and does it meet the specifications of the client okay because remember it's not good enough just to make something you have to make something that's within the constraints right so did this actually do what your client wanted did it stay the right temperature did it stay the right temperature for long enough right did it come in under cost usually you can see the cost before you you get through the prototype building um, but ultimately maybe something happened while you were making your prototype and you needed more or less, right? Um, so ultimately you're basically asking, does this do what I set out to do? And regardless of whether it does or not, we have to communicate that 
I have to communicate that to supervisors, to managers, to your teachers. Okay, And that's really where that whole claim evidence reasoning comes back. So ultimately, you're going to make a claim about what you saw in the data. And you're going to need to find evidence that supports that claim. You have to find evidence from your tests of your prototypes that supports your claim of whether or not this meets the client's needs. That's ultimately what uh, communication looks like for this sort of thing. And I will tell you, communication is probably the hardest part for a lot of people. Um, and then if it isn't, or if it is, ultimately the next stage would be redesigning. Uh, so sometimes our prototypes are good and we don't need to worry too much about what's coming next. Uh, most of my classroom activities are like that. The only time you'll redesign uh, in my classroom activities uh, that are engineering based uh, is if there's some sort of uh, mix up um, or if there's time to do an improvement, uh, there might be some extra credit that way. Uh, but for the most part, most people end up uh, only redesigning in situations wherein things just didn't work and they want a better grade. Um, ordinarily, in the real world, you know, you don't have to move on to all these other topics, uh, so you can actually just sit here and keep working. So, for instance, the iPhone team that engineered your last iPhone probably moves on to some other iteration of iPhones. In fact, probably there's multiple teams working um, on different series of iPhones or, or something along those lines. Uh, so realistically, we take from what our experiences are, we share that within our teams, and then we keep working to improve. And that's really the redesign process. You're never really done with anything. They're never going to stop making uh, Galaxy S series at Samsung, right? They're just going to keep making more and more and more. And they're going to keep improving it. And it's going to keep getting better. And that's the basic idea of how that, that sort of thing works. You don't just go, okay, we're done. We made a phone. Cool. You make more phones and you improve that. And that's that's really what redesign is. is you kind of just keep going back through that loop. You, you cr innovate and redesign to make something that's even better than what you had before. And that's really the loop. Um, so ordinarily, in my class, we take one uh, trip through the loop, um, and we don't really keep going back and forth. Uh, you, in the real world, it's a cyclic process, and if um, there were some issues with a prototype that you tested, um, usually I will have you try to explain in your communications, what went wrong, uh, and use that to recover your credit instead of uh, communicating, or instead of trying to redo it, because there's just not enough time. Uh, all this stuff is, is pretty lengthy. These are usually two, two and a half week long projects, because uh, it's not fast uh, to do all this stuff. So ultimately, uh, we don't continue to cycle through the loop uh, in the real world, yeah, absolutely. It keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Okay, uh, That's really about it. So hopefully you guys are really successful at engineering some hot and cold packs. And I'll see you in the lab. Have a good one.